Good day. We'd like to thank the Mindanao Development Authority for allowing us this opportunity to present on the topic Harnessing New Alternative Sources of Energy like Hydrogen Energy Generation for Mindanao. Hydrogen is not an energy source but an energy carrier, which means that its potential role has similarities with that of electricity. The crucial difference between hydrogen and electricity is that hydrogen is a chemical energy carrier which can be stored and transported in a stable way. Because of its molecular nature, hydrogen can also be combined with other elements such as carbon and nitrogen to make hydrogen-based fuels that are easier to handle and can be used as feedstock in industry, helping it to reduce emissions. As mentioned earlier, hydrogen is a colorless gas. However, there is color code used to distinguish the source or process used to produce hydrogen. The black and brown colors refer to the type using bituminous black and lignite brown coal. This type of hydrogen is produced from a very polluting process as carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are produced as byproducts and released into the atmosphere. For turquoise hydrogen, the process is still at the experimental stage where the carbon is removed in a solid form instead of a CO2 gas. These three are the major classifications according to its production pathway. In addition, these are what we consider exploring in the Philippines. Gray hydrogen is made using fossil fuels like oil and coal which emit CO2 into the air as they combust. Blue hydrogen is made in the same way, but carbon capture storage or CCS technologies prevent CO2 from being released, enabling the captured carbon to be safely stored deep underground or utilized in industrial processes. And lastly, green hydrogen is the cleanest variety producing zero carbon emissions. It is produced using electrolysis powered by renewable energy like offshore wind, producing clean fuel. It is indicated in our Philippine Energy Plan, PEP, that the DOE is looking on hydrogen as another viable alternative and cleaner form of energy for the country, as it has been globally recognized to provide a diverse range of energy applications, including distributed power, backup power, portable power, auxiliary power for passenger and freight vehicles, among others. In this pursuit, we have established a high committee, the Hydrogen and Fusion Energy Committee, in charge of the study on the viability and feasibility of hydrogen and fusion energy in the Philippines, including fuel resource development and utilization, the strategy, timeline, and roadmap. In HFEC study on the impact of hydrogen, as indicated in the PEP 2018-2040, particularly in the road transport and power generation sector under the Clean Energy Scenario or CES, the study developed three main scenarios as shown. Scenario 1, hydrogen to replace a portion of fossil fuel power plants, coal and natural gas, with green hydrogen from various renewable energies as an option for off-grid generating plants. 10% gray-blue hydrogen plus 1 megawatt green hydrogen for off-grid, 20% gray-blue hydrogen plus 1 megawatt green hydrogen for off-grid, and 30% gray-blue hydrogen plus 1 megawatt green hydrogen for off-grid. Scenario 2 looks into the application of hydrogen for transport, which aims for hydrogen to replace gasoline cars and diesel buses at 10% penetration rate by 2040. Lastly, Scenario 3 explores hydrogen application for both power and transport. The following are the gaps and challenges in the utilization of hydrogen as an alternative fuel. Infrastructure for distribution and user. Hydrogen is used for transport sector needs refueling stations to be able to maximize its use in cities that are heavy users of oil. For ease of transporting, it may also require pipelines from the producing plant to the distribution facility. Supporting frameworks. Like any other fuel, supporting frameworks on the safety standards of hydrogen distribution and infrastructure are important for the successful implementation of hydrogen use in the country, both in power and transport. With hydrogen as an emerging fuel for power and transport, it is important to address the barriers to the successful implementation of the initiative. Currently, the Philippines has no specific laws or policy directives on hydrogen use. The country will first adopt a national hydrogen framework which includes a roadmap and infrastructure development in the areas of transportation and power such as the installation, operation of facilities, supply of fuel starting from production, storage, distribution, handling, and energy resource development. 
To materialize the aspirations in our PEP, we have the following institutionalized partnerships, a memorandum of agreement with the DOST Industrial Technology Development Institute on the establishment of fuel cell research and development and testing facility, memorandum of understanding with foreign companies, uh, Hydrogen Scientific Limited of Australia and Hydrogen Technology Incorporated of Japan. The MOA with uh, DOST ITDI on the establishment of fuel cell research and development of testing facilities focus on materials development and innovation for specific cell components and undertake testing of performance and durability to address the current limitations on fuel cells. We are already on year two of a three-year agreement with the following accomplishments. Completed the design and initial construction of the testing facility. Procured 16 laboratory instruments and equipment. Participated in the online training on the fundamentals of hydrogen and fuel cell technology. And ongoing research on profiling of energy materials. The Philippine government and Star Scientific expressed their intention to co-work in exploring the use of hydrogen as a fuel for power generation, as well as the role it can play in the economy of the Philippines as a whole. Shown are the salient points of the MOU. HTI and DOE collaborate to look on the method on how to employ hydrogen for power supply. HTI envisions to send a prototype unit of their hydrogen power generation technology to the Philippines for demonstration. We have here the Mindanao Energy Profile, which shows that coal, is the major fuel type use in the region comprising of 50.1%. In the power sector roadmap for the region for 2023 to 2040, it is indicated to utilize cleaner technologies and increase flexibility in power generation, implement a coal moratorium, and conduct off-grid policy review and studies, among others. Exploring and harnessing other clean energy technologies such as nuclear and hydrogen to replace coal for baseload generation. Hydrogen fuel cell can be explored as it provides a wide range of applications. It can be utilized to power vehicles, buildings, and backup power systems, which is a critical option for cell sites and data banks. Such technologies are grid-independent that can be utilized as a source of power to residential areas in off-grid locations. This ends the presentation. Thank you for your kind attention.